Hey, what's up? My name is Justin and welcome to 65 Drums. Today's video is all about silent kick drum beaters. In the world of e-drums, there's a lot of people like me that bought electronic drums because they're quieter than acoustic sets. But then there's another subset of people where a regular electronic drum set just isn't quiet enough, which is what today's about. So in front of me, I've got all kinds of different kinds of kick drum beaters. We're gonna be testing them on three different kinds of kick drum pads a Roland KD-120, also a KT-4 kick drum pad, which has an acoustic head on it with foam on the back of it, and then a Roland conversion package that's on a 22-inch bass drum shell. Basically give us an idea of which ones of these actually are effective and worth buying, and which are just uh, you know trash and you shouldn't buy them at all. So let's take a look at the contestants. The first ones are from Roland. So this is the KDB-120 and the KDB-200. Now, I've never really seen anyone actually make a video on this. I saw it on Sweetwater one day, and I was like, huh, this, this looks kind of odd. I've never actually seen anyone use one of these, so I bought it. And then of course, this is the free one that comes on a lot of Roland drum sets. This came with my Roland uh, TD30K. Not a giant fan of this because the shaft gets bent. I actually literally had to go take a hammer with a concrete floor and just hammer this back into a straight shape again. And I'm interested to see if whether or not this actually works very well. It's got a pretty, uh, it's actually pretty dense. It seems to have some sort of like rubber coating on it and then maybe some foam on the inside. It's hard to tell but we're gonna see whether or not it actually works. So the next two are called ball beaters. This one is from Cap Percussion and this one is from Drum Tech. They're pretty much exactly the same. The construction, I don't really see that many differences at all. Um, the shaft on this one from Drum Tech is a little bit too short for me. Like you literally have to put this all the way up on your kick drum pedal, but they're essentially the same. And I've actually used both of these on my, uh, my 22 inch bass drum for like, I don't know, you know, like a month or a couple months or something. As you can see right here, there's like cosmetic wear and tear around the seams on both of them. So you're not gonna get away without, you know, wearing these out a little bit, but it's kind of like ripping the seats on your drum throne. It doesn't really affect how it works. It just kind of looks bad. The next two, actually, I wish I could say that these were both in working order, but they're not. These are two drum tech sound absorbing kick drum beaters. So this one is a newer one. This is an older one. I ripped this one up because I wasn't using a kick drum patch. You have to use a kick drum patch because this is made out of foam and uh, they get torn up really quickly without one. So this actually has three different layers. The first is the body, it's made out of plastic. The next two layers are made out of foam. The really light layer right there, that's a very dense foam. And then the black layer right there, it's a very light springy foam. And then there's a layer of glue on top of that. And then of course, I'm gonna be testing them against regular acoustic kick drum beaters, like a regular DW kick drum beater and like felt kick drum beaters. And let's see if there's actually a real difference between the volume outputs of all these. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this short and sweet because it's like 2 a.m. and also I'm like five days into making this video. I've done a lot of testing with and without a decibel meter and all the different kinds of kick drum surfaces 
And here are my conclusions so far. As far as actual legit performance, uh, these kick drum beaters, they do have an effect, but it is very limited, unfortunately. And also, I did exactly what I said I shouldn't do, and I used this without a kick drum patch during some of the testing. And uh, again, this is a very, very fragile kick drum beater. Uh, the drum tech nose absorbing one just fell to pieces. So unfortunately, now I have zero kick drum beaters that are the sound absorbing kind. As far as these guys right here, let's see, I actually wrote it down. I'm only seeing about like maybe a negative uh, 12, a negative 13 dB difference between this and then a baseline, such as a DW plastic kick drum beater. So that's kind of what you're looking at. But even like testing the audio differences, it depends on how hard you're hitting. And then also your kick drum pedal does make noise too. So a lot of different factors go into this. All I'm trying to say is that you're not cutting your volume by half at all. You're just taking the edge off. And the big difference between a kick drum beater like the, the ball beater one, you're getting more of like the sound of you hitting a pillow. Meanwhile, the plastic one, it's more of like a, you know, a slapping sound. It's a little bit more irritating to be in the room and hear this versus hearing more, you know, hearing this. This is a more pleasant sound. Even though it's not drastically quieter than the plastic ones, the shift in tone by itself is one reason to buy these. But do you actually need to buy these? I would say no. And I should probably mention the Drum Tech Pro Dot uh, kick drum patch because I've tested that quite a bit. Here's my overall findings with that. It doesn't really help that much as far as volume goes, but what it does do is it basically makes your mesh kick drum less bouncy. If you're looking to make your kick drum have less rebound overall, this really does help. Now, of course, you know, it depends on how you test it. I was using the kick drum patch in the middle of the drum and I was testing the beaters off slightly more towards the edge, which where it's a little bit more bouncy. But even with all those variables, I think you can clearly see from these graphs that it really does help with rebound. But also I need to point out, it's a $20 kick drum patch and it's basically the same material that you'll find on a mouse pad. So it's gonna be up to you whether or not you want something that looks official and drum-like or if you want to do a DIY version and find a, a similar material at a Walmart. Sorry, I couldn't give you like a silver bullet, you know, just spend 15 bucks and change your life. You're gonna have to buy this as part of a system of, of other things like building your own platform or buying roll on noise eaters. You can, you can choose either path, you know, DIY or buy the, you know, the product itself. I'll link all those resources down in the description below. But this is just gonna be a step towards making your drum set quieter. You gotta play quieter, that does work. You know, it works on acoustic drums and also works on electric. You maybe buy one of these, you know, build a platform or buy the roll and noise eaters. Do a little thing, do all these little things together and they combine to make your drum set way quieter. And then maybe your neighbors won't be mad at you. As far as what I might do, I don't know. I don't really need something incredibly quiet. So I actually might go back to regular DW kick drum beaters or maybe I'll just buy a second one of these Roland ones because I actually do like these. Even though they aren't the most quiet on the list, um, they're, they're the most fun out of the entire list. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a few.